As leg locks eventually become more common in MMA, I'm sure we're going to start seeing more submissions like the toe hold being utilised by more and more fighters. However, today I would like to look specifically at the toe hold from belly down position. Because of the ground and pound element in MMA, performing a traditional toe hold from bottom position or a leg entanglement could mean that your opponent gains top position and bludgeon you if they escape. The advantage of the belly down toe hold is that should your opponent's foot escape from the grip, you're still in a strong position to scramble on top or flow to your next submission attempt. This is something we've started to see from fighters like Paul Redmond and even Dylan Dennis who pulled one off in his MMA debut. For the purposes of showing the hand positioning and because it's the clearest video, let's look at the grips that Dylan used here. As you can see, his right hand is gripping the top of his opponent's foot. Ideally, you want your palm to be at least covering the two smallest toes of your opponent to get maximum leverage, but not exclusively on the toes or you may lose control of the foot. The left hand is gripping the right wrist very much like a Kimura lock, and this left forearm is running parallel alongside the foot of his opponent. It is this arm which will be pulling the opponent's foot down towards their butt, and the right hand is causing the rotation on the foot by bending the toes inwards. Here we see how the mechanic affects the direction of the foot until Danis gets a tap, but now we're going to go back to Paul. When going for a toe hold, Paul likes to get top position and use almost a reverse mount or reverse half guard to isolate his opponent's legs while staying on top. Before committing to diving on a foot, Paul makes sure he first gets the grip he wants on the top of the foot of his opponent. As he rolls to his side, the other hand comes through and locks up the foot. He immediately turns his hips back so he regains top position and applies downward pressure with his hips to control his opponent. As we watch it again from another angle, we see that Paul is driving his opponent's foot towards his butt just like we saw Dylan do in the first example. But this is not the only setup or the only finish that Paul likes to use for the submission. In his fight with Ryan Roddy, Paul uses a very different setup and a very different finish to the one we've just seen. The first thing you'll notice is how Paul is in side control and actually puts himself back into the half guard of his opponent and this is what he's going to use to control his opponent's hips and keep him on top when he rolls for the toe hold. When Paul tried the toe hold on Norman Park, he didn't have this control over either of Norman's legs, meaning that Norman was able to freely move and the direction of the toe hold was the same direction that Norman needed to turn to escape, as explained in this video by Dean Lister. If I grab the toe hold here, I'm actually helping the turn. Turn your knee. He will turn. I'm actually helping the turn. But in the fight with Ryan does have some control over his opponent because he has put himself in half guard. Notice before Paul rolls for the toe hold, Roddy is covering up because he thinks that Paul is going to try some ground and pound, but we can see that Paul is looking back to Ryan's feet to see if he thinks his submission is on the table. He reaches for the foot with his right hand and once he is confident in the grip, he rolls and tries to lock up the figure 4 grip on the foot. Now notice that the leg that Paul put back into half guard is now going to be used like a hook to pull him back into top position. His grip is perfectly positioned on the foot with his palm over the side of the foot and covering the smallest of his opponent's toes. As he goes belly down, he applies pressure to control Ryan and his feet are posting out either side to prevent Ryan from turning. Another thing you will notice that is much different this time around is how much more extended the leg of his opponent is. However, just because Paul isn't bringing Ryan's foot to his butt, this does not mean that the toe hold is now useless. As explained in this video by MMA Leech, when the toe hold is applied to a leg which is extended, the rotation shifts from the foot down to the knee joint instead. And I take him to his end range, as you can see, his foot will also rotate in or his TBA will internally rotate, which attacks the knee joint. As we can see from this other angle, as Paul rotates the foot, it's putting an increasing amount of pressure on the knee of Roddy. I would ask at this moment that you divert your attention to Roddy's knee, where we're about to see the knee rotate inwards. It's a similar but not the same mechanic as a heel hook. We know it's the knee joint being manipulated that causes the tap, as almost simultaneously Roddy taps as the knee internally rotates. In this example, we actually see Paul starting off from bottom position as he tries to sweep the opponent standing over him. Not wishing to be swept, his opponent actually rolls for a toe hold of his own. However, you will notice that he doesn't properly establish the grip on Paul's foot before diving on the submission. This means that Paul is not only able to get his foot away, but also he is able to get the essential control over one of his opponent's legs by trapping them in kind of a triangle shape with his own. Now Paul grabs his own toe hold and once he feels confident the grip is secure, he will untriangle his leg and step over to gain top position and again applies downward pressure with his hips to control the other man. Notice also that his opponent has gone back to trying a toe hold of his own, but remember we want the palm covering the toes and here his grip is along the side of the foot and does not provide enough leverage to crush the foot causing it to bend and rotate. Having realised his toe hold isn't effective, the opponent tries to turn on to his side to escape, but if you remember the toe hold on Ryan Roddy, Paul uses his feet as posts so he's able to drive his opponent back to the mat using what we call active toes and at the same time hip pressure to get his opponent flat.
When we look at the same submission but from another angle, we can see that Paul goes for what looks like a heel hook, but he's not actually going for a heel hook here at all. He does not have the leg entanglement or the control for finishing a heel hook, but what he does is still very clever. He uses this heel hook-esque grip to control his opponent's foot and then simply passes it to his other hand to set up the toe hold. The final extra detail I would like to mention in this submission attempt is how Paul is also using his head on the top of his hands to add an increased amount of force to the submission. We have seen the same concept used by Frank Mir in his toehold victory over Tank Abbott. I use my head. That way it's not just my arms working, my whole body, if you watch, I put my forehead on my own hand and now I squeeze with my abs and I just try to make it a whole body motion. All right then guys, that is it for this episode of Skills Worth Stealing. As always, I encourage you to check out Paul's fights on UFC Fight Pass and on YouTube, and don't forget to check him out on social media. If you enjoyed the video and would like more of the same, please like and subscribe to the channel. Catch you next week.